So good evening, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Balaji uh, welcoming you on behalf of MQ Pharmaceuticals for a evening with Dr. Saple. Uh, he will be sharing his thoughts and uh, uh, vision about uh, uh, new new happenings in the ARV therapy. And uh, to introduce Dr. Saple, I have my colleague, Dr. Uh, Rohan Gurjar uh, from MQ Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Dr. Rohan himself. Uh, is uh, distinct has a distinguished uh, career. He has done his MBBS from the DY Pake Medical College and went on to do his master's in pharmacology from the Northeastern University in Boston, after which he went to the University of Liverpool to do a PhD in antiretroviral therapy and uh, specializing uh, in uh, drug drug interactions and gene drug interactions especially with this uh, uh, work in the trials, uh, uh, clinical settings of NEAT-001 and ANRS-143 study. So we are happy to have uh, uh, Dr. Gurjar uh, Rohan and to introduce uh, Dr. Saple, our friend, philosopher and guide for so many years. And uh, welcome Dr. Saple. Good evening to you. And uh, yes, over to Dr. Rohan. Yeah, I hope everyone can see my slide. Uh, thank you for that kind introduction, uh, Mr. Balaji, sir. Uh, for those of us who have been involved with treating patients with HIV or even uh, in research uh, regarding HIV, uh, we all know that a few decades ago, three drug combinations had become the norm. But with uh, new uh, antiretroviral drugs, which are potent and safe, uh, a lot of uh, emphasis or research went on onto two drug combinations and because of which we have some regimens in the market. But along with the uh, advantages, there are some challenges as well. Uh, and I think it's important that we understand these challenges to do justice to our patients. So to help us with that task, today we are graced with the presence of uh, Professor Dr. D.G. Sapre. Uh, Dr. D.G. Sapre is a towering personality, uh, especially in the field of HIV and AIDS. Uh, and throughout the years, he has uh, earned a lot of feathers in his cap. Uh, just to kind of uh, name some of his accomplishments, uh, Dr. D.J. Sapre is a fellow at John Hopkins University at Bloomberg, USA, and has been the honorary professor and head at, uh, for dermatology, venereology, leprology at the Grant Medical College and the Sir J.J. Group of Hospitals in Mumbai. He's currently a consultant in dermatovenerology, leprology, and HIV AIDS at the Breach Candy Hospital, the SL Raheja Hospital, and Fort Fortis Associate in Mumbai. He's also a trainer for many fellowship programs uh, with, uh, regarding HIV and AIDS, and also an examiner for many MD exams. He has been the president of IADVL and the College of Physicians and Surgeons. He's delivered up to 992 lectures across the country and represented India in more than 108 international events. He has more than 40 peer reviewed publications and has presented more than 55 articles in international conferences. He has also arranged or organized a lot of conferences nationally and, uh, and uh, has been in collaboration in, with many international institutes such as Harvard, John Hopkins and Yale, just to name a few. Uh, he has been conferred the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Indian Medical Association in 2017 in Mumbai, and also by the Indian Association of Dermatologists, Venereologists, and Leprologists in 2018 in Maharashtra. Additionally, he has won the Best Practitioner Award at Dermacon International Congress in 2019 in Bangalore. So without further ado, I would request uh, Dr. Sapre to please uh, come ahead uh, and enlighten us uh, with the topic he has prepared today. Thank you. Uh, Ro Rohan, thank you for nice introduction. And I think I'll take some time to share my slide. So, okay. yeah, once I... Hmm. Yeah. The slides are seen. Yes, yes sir. You can see your slides. Please go ahead. 
let me thank you mqr mr balaji jay prakash and your whole team for giving me this opportunity to share about the two drug therapy in our country probably i, I may not be wrong probably i must have started of course i have started about 4 years back about the dual therapy or two drug art so talking about two drug art today i thought first let me give just what is what is the goal of art or the hiv therapy all of us we know it but i'll just go through it very fast of course maximally durable suppression of plasma virus which is very important restoration and preservation of the immune function reduction of hiv associated morbidity prolongation of the duration of quality of survival and of course reduction of the hiv to undetectable level mm -hmm. that is less than 20 copies less than 20 copies so that what is now it is called is undetectable or zero level so these these are the aim of art or antiretroviral therapy antiretroviral therapy antiretroviral therapy of course till if you take for example in 95 the hi was the main main cause of death in a in a place like usa but if you see after this art or triple drug therapy came for the clinical use the hiv has become the last cause of the death in even in in, in most of the country with the art is available then coming to survival that is hiv treatment and hiv illness and disability and air related deaths goes down and the patient starts surviving normally or what you call is they are surviving as good as any non hiv or immuno competent patient if you take in before 96 days to survive about 8 years but today they are surviving more than 60 years with a good quality of life this is possible because of antiretroviral therapy so what is the what are the strategy of antiretroviral therapy of course there are resilience and the impact antiretroviral therapy should be reached to all who are infected viral suppression with the art is necessary or oh, that's called undetectable virus is untransmissible and that is the way we can prevent the transmission of hiv and we can control hiv by transmission then according to who all of us we know the formula of 99 9090 that is 90% detection 90% remain in the art and 90% remain virological suppress that is the aim that we have to achieve but it will take long time at the same time we are developing new strategy to control hiv by keeping under control or undetectable by new strategy one of the strategy new is the adherence of course is a old strategy but it has been emphasized with the new drug individualization rapid initiation mdr hiv dual therapy swiss therapy about the covid and hiv so today i'm going to cover about the dual therapy so i'll just cover a little bit about the upcoming drugs most of the upcoming new drugs either they are monoclonal antibodies or they are what is called they are the capsid inhibitors or the capsid inhibitor these are the more drugs they are they are based at the nucleus more than the other side coming to adherence adherence we know that hiv or any chronic disease adherence is the most important part of the management but here why we require adherence because of many patient they get fed up and they may have poor adherence so those patient who have got poor adherence we can use boosted pi or insta like bictagravir dalutagravir who have 
high generic barrier to resistance. So those patients who are poor adherence, we can use this. This is the advantage of this, what we call the high, gen uh, high genetic barrier or resistant drugs. And whenever you use the virological patient is under suppress, of course, the virus remains under control and we, the patient may not transmit this how we can control. Talking of adherence with the Bictagravir and Dalutagor, if you see the adherence, most of the patients who are on the Bictagravir or, or, or the Dalutagravir, their control is more than 84%, 90%. So these are the very good drugs along with the Darunavir. Then talking about what they call is the individualization. The drugs, whenever any patient comes to your clinic, the meaning of individualization, certain patient may not afford the expensive drug. So you have to decide to that individual, which is the best drug. Certain patients, that individual may have some liver problem. So there are certain drugs you cannot give because the liver compromise or renal compromise. So drug has to be individualized. And some people are having problem with their taking two, three drugs. So you can have to one drug. So what is called single dose therapy. So all this has to be taken in account that is called individualization. They're just going for what is given in WHO, what is given in the our director of health services. We have to go according to need of individual. Then we get a better result. For example, a patient is not ready for anti therapy. Please do not start because it's not going to serve our purpose. So patient factors are very important. Only doctors works only unilaterally. The one of the best drug is dalutagravir. You just give dalutagravir and patient is not ready. It's not going to work because adherence will be hampered. So these factor has to be taken or what is called individualization of the treatment. Then coming to rapid ART initiation. We used to wait for so what is called conventional starting ART, wait for the CD4 count to fall below 200. But today they said you should start ART as early as possible. Or they said the day you diagnose. What I mean by doing that, we are increasing likelihood retention of number of patients in ART and there will be more viral suppression. While if you go for the standard care or conventional care, there is tra trained for the decreased likelihood of loss to follow up and the death, more morbidity and more mortality. So this is one of the study shows. So now the whole world has accepted rapid ART therapy. But when you're talking of rapid ART therapy, there are, that doesn't mean each and every patient you can start the day you're diagnosed. ART initiation should be offered on the same day to the people who are ready to start. So people are ready to start, not everybody. The patient is not ready, please do not start. Secondly, some of the patient has got underlying opportunistic infection. Of course, all of us, we are now aware, whenever the patient you are going to start an ART, we have to rule out underlying opportunistic infection and place like India, at least we have to rule out tuberculosis. Like of course, if you are in South America, coccidiosis, if you are in Chiang Mai, you are think of penicillinosis. So different diseases, according to geographical, we have to rule out the underlying emerging infection before starting AIT. That's a, so you do not start on the same day after investigations. Next comes the MDR HIV, like MDR tuberculosis. Now the number of cases are not more, but MDR HIV still remains the relevant. We know what are the causes. One of the causes is the non-adherence, inadequate supply of the drugs, improper uh, improper prescriptions, and so many other factors, non-availability of the drugs. So when we are suspecting there may be HIV uh, resist, multi-drug HIV resistance, where there are certain drugs like ibalizumab. Now biologicals are used in each and every subject. Of course, basically I'm a dermatologist, so biologicals we are used a lot, but now in HIV also one of the treatment is imalizumab, that is monoclonal antibody, that is anti-CD4 receptors. You can use postemasavir, 
which is also proven the CD4 cell attachment. And another drug is PRO140, but these are the drugs for the MDR HIV. They, they, there is a study for Ebalizumab where they said you can use drug, but especially Ebalizumab use on those patients who have taken multiple drugs and the HIV is not under control, you can use imalizumab in one of the drugs. And that is still not available in our country, but they said use with the patient with multi-class resistance virus. On the patients who have taken antiretroviral therapy for the last 10, 15 years, whose adherence is not good, and they have taken almost all classes, you can use imalizumab. Then another strategy is two drug therapy. Now, for example, this is one of my patient. They, for example, this patient is known the patient of pulmonary cox. Patient was on tinopor, FTC, and lopinavir. Tinopor, FTC, and lopinavir. Of course, because the anticox, the patients were on, on the rifabutin more than rifampicin because the patient is on lipid. And she was non diabetic and non hypertensive, this patient. But she developed sugar 3, serum credit on the borderline, but there was a glycosuria and urinary albuminuria. We know this is the patient is going into tenofovir toxicity. So we change this tenofovir to abacavir. All of us, we are doing this. That is, I'm talking about 2015, but the patient developed hypersensitivity and then we change abacavir to AZT. In 2015, there was a hardly test of what you call HLAB5701, which was not available in 2015. So unfortunately, the patient has to take the drug and we have to watch whether the patient is developing any reaction or not. So this is the case. And this HLAB5701 test, nowadays, before starting patient on any patient starting or shifting or switching to abacavir, we get that test done. But it's a very expensive test and I'm thankful to MQR. MQR is offering this test. Those patients need abacavir is a free. I must thank you MQR for these facilities. And because of this, now starting abacavir has become very easy and convenient. But this patient with the AGT develop anemia and discoloration of the nail. So this patient, see, we didn't have a choice. Even in 2000, we stopped prescribing D4T. That is last almost 20 years. But in 2015, this patient, there was no other option but to start D4T. It, it, it is a drug which is not, but in this patient, there was no choice. But patient developed dyslipidemia, that is cholesterol has gone up, triglycerides has gone up because lupinavir, retinavir, and of course deportee also is responsible for that. But we change lupinavir to atazanavir because atazanavir is retinavir single dose. Lupinavir is 200, which is responsible for that. So we change it to atazanavir. For patient develop severe neuritis, that is because of D4T, even if CD4 count was good, virus load was undetectable. So now, what, is, what was the left? In 2017, no drug, only drug was left is a Darunavir. Patient said, I can't afford. So you know, that is called management of the individualization. Patient said, I can't afford, then what you can do? And then, Luckily, Dolutagrav is available, and there are a lot of studies. We switch over this patient to Dolutagrav and 3TC, where CD4 count was good, viral load was undetectable. So when you're, when you're switching to two-drug therapy, I'm going to tell what are the things you should follow. But one of the things, patient adherence has to be very good. Virus load has to be undetectable for a long time more than six months, CD4 count has to be good. So we taken all care, we started on this and see in 2000, up to four years, the CD4 count is 840 and virus load is undetectable. So definitely we can use two drug therapy. We don't have to worry, but we have to be very careful. 
this is about one of the patient. So these are the patient when they can't afford, they where the role comes of the two drug therapy. So according to literature, the triple drug therapy is highly effective, but can two drug do the work of triple drug therapy? Can they suppress HIV the way triple drug therapy can? Because there are the, in our country, the cost is used to, but toxicity is also not a less issue because most of the patient now, they are on antiretroviral therapy more than 15, 20 years. The toxicity has also become a big issue along with the cost in our country. So when you're talking of the two drugs, the initially dolutagran and Rilpravim was approved for the maintenance for dual therapy, for the maintenance. The meaning of maintenance, the patient CD4 count is good, virus load is under control more than six months where you can use as a maintenance. So when you're talking of the maintenance, what they are, what are the indications what are the key factors? What are the dose ad adjustment when you are starting with two drug therapy? There are a lot of norms. We have to follow this norm. So one of the study called uh, SOR1 and 2, where they have selected patients who are on stable ART. That means more than six months with the baseline HIV RNA less than 50 copies. No previous virological failure is a very important. Any patient has previous virological failure, you cannot shift on or switch on to two drugs. And current HIV infection, fresh infection there, we cannot. So comparing Insta, NNRTI, PA or two NRTI, I think that even if there is a history of resistance to these drugs, we should not use this. So what we call is the maintenance for dual therapy. We are not talking about the initials. So there are trial. One of the trial is Dolotokara with 3TC for the maintenance. That is the paddle study, single arm phase, ACTG, 5353 for the initiation. For the maintenance, you go for the Aspire study. Then Dolotokaravir and Darunavir again for the maintenance. Darunavir and 3TC. So there are many, of course, now we are getting injectable cabetagravir and rilpivirin for the maintenance. So most of them are the maintenance and there are for initiation, I'm going to show this. So when to consider switch therapy, that is for two drugs, for the simplifications, many times the patients are taking four or five tablets. And if you can convert into one tablet, patient will be very happy you will be very comfortable and his adherence will definitely increase. To avoid the toxicity, to improve the tolerability or the for convenience purpose, to manage drug-drug interactions, because many patients now they are living more than 60, 65. So they are either on the cardiac medicine, liver medicine or the renal medicine or comorbidity. So we are dealing with the drug-drug interactions where we have Dr. Rohan Gurjar, who is very good in drug-drug interaction. That is his main interest. So any questions I think we'll ask to Dr. Rohan. Of course, I am also there, but I'll expect Rohan to deal with it. Yeah, pregnancy and the cause. And this is the international, but I have added comorbidity and aging. The patient who are aging, where we have to go for the minimum drugs, or patient who has got comorbidity, who had to go to minimum drugs. So these are the various indications for switching to two drug therapy. When you are switching to two drug therapy, of course, initially Dolutagra Rilprovin was approved, but there are many drugs. And they say like PI with RT, like Lopinavirin 3TC or Insta with 3TC may be reasonable option when the patient cannot tolerate, afford, or cannot accept tenofovir, TAP, or abacavir, or there are contraindications or toxicity, we can go for the three drugs because our what is called optimum base, that is tenofovir, TAP, abacavir, you cannot use it. You have to go for two drugs, but you have to follow. And the monotherapy is not acceptable at all. These are the various conditions. For example, 
patient is on abacavirin 3 TC and he has got cardiac problem, we cannot use with the best therapy. So there you can give only thing when you are switching, you have to see that creating clear has to more than 50. Again, the TAP and APTC, again, the creating clear is more than 30. We cannot use it. These are the condition where we can go for two drug therapy or dual therapy. But now there are study we can start as a first line or what he called in a naive patient, not only maintenance. So there are again the same slide I'm showing for the initiation or naive therapy or for the maintenance. And if you see the guideline of director of human health services of the USA, see dolutegravir and 3TC is one of the important therapy recommended for most of the patient as an initial therapy or initiation or in the naive patient. But when you are put, uh, starting a naive patients, there are recommendation that the baseline HIV, RNA, CD4 count, creatine cl clearance, easy FR, HLA-B570, hepatitis B, and osteoporosis, all this has to be the patient has to be investigated. This is the standard in the USA. And we have to see that there is no mutation to NNRTI and NSTI. And dual therapy should be considered when abacavir, TAP, TDF cannot be used. Secondly, when you're using darunavir, darunavir and raltagravir, I'm talking raltagravir, not dolutagravir. The virus load has to be less than one lakh because more than one lakh, it may not work. So these are the various precautions we have to take before switching to two drug therapy. I was mentioning about ACTG, A535, these studies where they are used dolutegravir and 3TC and it is successful. Again, the conditions are the same, what I mentioned before starting two drug therapy. So this is the boosted darunavir with raltagravir. Daruno, that time, about this uh, dolutegravir is not available when the studies are going on. So they are compared with the raltagravir. But when you combine the raltagravir, raltagravir is not of that potent drugs where there are poor efficacy with a patient with a HIV, RNA is more than one lakh and CD4 count is less than 200. But not come when you combine the dolutegravir. Dolutegravir is the high resistance barrier so darunavir with the, with the dolutegravir, you don't have to worry. So yeah, the dolutegravir alpervin, they have a given additional regime is they have given for the maintenance. Maintenance, the first line, dolutegravir 3 tc can be given in the naive patient if they can't tolerate three drugs or they can't afford or they cannot tolerate. So the, these are the my recommendation before starting what we do we take the good history of adherence. Adherence is not good. Please don't switch on to two drug therapy. Of course, it has to be stable. More than six months, the virus load has to be less than 50 copies. And no previous history of failure or current age wave infection or any resistance to two drugs, you are going to use it. But then you'll ask me question 3TC, there is always mutation. See, it is the mutations that is called M184V. But because this is according to CROI conference in 2018, they say mutation about 3TC is not cause of failure. And even there is a mutation, the dual therapy, even there is a mutation to Lamivadivin, dual therapy works because usually there is a mutation to the uh, mutation and this is not resistant mutation is for the wild variety. And these studies that is again in the CROI conference that initiation darunavir, retinovir plus 3TC achieve similar efficacy by using darunavir, 3TC and TDF. So these two drugs, this is the finding in 2018 by the CROI. I feel CROI is the most miss research wise that is a very high conference. So there are my patients who started about 
30, more than 36 months, that patients on dolutagravir, raltagravir, that time we used to use a lot of raltagravir, lopinovir 3TC, lopinovir raltagravir, darunavir D, DTG, darunavir and dolutagravir, darunavir, darunavir, darunavir and 3TC, DTC and 3TC, lopinovir and, and DTC, all combination, combination can be used. And this patient will use because to avoid pill burden, comorbidity, toxicity, if you see toxicity, toxicity and pill burden and the cost. These are the main reasons. This is one of the latest study, uh, uh, let, latest study about the dolutagravir with the boosted darunavir. That is a true drug therapy. And this is the done on the large number of patients. And this study is done for a long study. Efficacy and safety of switching to dolutagravir with boosted daranavir. This is the title of the study. The A background, they said, because of the high generic resistance and the most potent dolutagravir and darunavir, this combination will be the best combination. And on that basis, this study was done where they have included 200 and 263 subject. So the conclusion of the study was Dalukravir, the boosted Daruna was non infinient con con continuing with the three drugs that is boosted Daruna with three drugs. These two drugs were as good as three drug combinations. Three drug combinations. I'll just see. See, this is the slide where you say what is called generic, generic barrier. If you see, Darunavur is the most potent drugs or high, highest uh, generic to the resistance, generic barrier to the resistance. Then come to Dolutagravir, Bictagravir, and then comes other. So these are the three important drugs are used for the dual therapy. Of course, then this is the, they, they have in the study, they have screened 269 patients, but randomized 262 patients they could not include in. And what they found, two drugs was non-inferior compared to three drugs. There were very few adverse events. There are only two patient loss in two drugs and five patient loss in two drugs. And withdrawal condition was four in two drugs and four in three drugs. So there was all comparable and the effect was as good as the three drugs. And most of the patients, they had a background, they use FTC, Tinopovir, FTC TAP, and 3TC Abacavir in the past. These were the drugs were used in the past and these are the patient and these are the drug maximum origin in our country. So this is the, there are hardly any adverse effects or the side effects and it was acceptable. So in conclusion, a switch to DTG in combination with the boosted Darunavi is effective and has an acceptable safety profile in previously suppressed people with HIV. But what now they are in the future study, what they are planning that Investigation of this combination as switch therapy in the people with the HIV and treatment failure of the interest and in underway. See, those patients who have failed on HIV or the failure cases, they want to try on those. But still, we do not have study. Still, we do not have support. Better not to get involved. So we can start the patients whose virus load is under suppression. Yeah. So I thought I'll share my, my patient. This is one of my patient was an Abaka with 3TC and Darunavir. We shifted to Raltagravir and Darunavir about four years back. And his CD4 virus load, everything is under control. This is another patient was an Atazanavir. We switched to Atazanavir and Raltagravir. Again, this is patient on Lopinavir. We see Tinopor 3TC, the mostly 3TC. Again, if you see epavirin 3TC, again lopinavir 3TC. Tinopur, atazanavir, toxicity, again the toxicity. Abakavir, altagravir, 
to the because they were resistant to NNRTI again here resistant to NN toxicity. So there are many patients: dolutegravir and 3TC, dorunavir and DTG. So all these, and if you see at the end of four years, we have followed this patient four years on our clinic, and we found they are doing very well. Only thing when you put this patient or switch this patient on two drug therapy, initially you have to see that their adherence is good and virus load testing has to be stringent. We usually we repeat after three years, sorry, three months, then after six months. And usually first two years, every six months, and then we develop confidence patient, then every year, but as far as possible, we repeat virus load every six months. That is very necessary if the patients are two drug therapy. So that was this, most of our patients are on dual death therapy more than four years. This is our experience. So I thought I'll share with you. This is another patient, a 40 year old male patient presently asymptomatic, is on uh, presently on Dorunavir and Dolutagravir for last four years, Darunavir and Dolotagravir, patient has no comorbidity, uh, no more uh, comorbidities. CD4 count is good, virus load is under control. Um, but if you see his past history, he presented with us in 2007 with disseminated COX. He was treated with ATT for 18 months, and then he was switched to TNA4, FTC, FOA, uh, yeah. Uh, almost he has taken six years, then shifted to, because virological failure, he shifted to lopinavir, but because of pill burden, that time Maravir was available with the M, uh, this MQR, we shifted to this patient could afford that, but he, somehow his CD4 count was not increasing. So we switched over to darunavir and Raltagravir. Patient was doing very well, but he said that I can't afford the cost. So ultimately the only option was to switch over to two drugs. We switch, we switch on Daruta, uh, Darunavir and Dalutagravir in 2017 and see the last four years, patient is doing very well because his CD4 count is good, virus load is under control and patient is asymptomatic. So these are the experience with my clinic. So I thought of sharing with you. And this is the last slide, which I picked up in the latest, what is the, they said before starting any ART, Ideally, you should get resistant or the mutation test done. I did look for the tropism, look for the virus load, look for the CD4 count before, yeah, comorbidities, co medications, HLAB 5701, previous ART, current ART, pregnancy, adherence. Availability of the drug, accessibility, TB in India, that is opportune infection, adverse reaction, food, a drug interaction, pill burden, and viral transmission. So many factors we have to take in consideration before starting ART. This is one of the latest recommendation they have given. So I thought I'll just share with you. And I think, thank you very much for allowing me to share my experience. And now we'll open for the question and answer and I think I'll I'll stop sharing. Uh, thank you, thank, thank you very you much. For that, thank you for that talk, doctor. Uh, it was a very comprehensive, you, know, you touched upon a lot of things. Uh, I would request all the audience to, if you know, if you have any questions, uh, you, you can either put in the question and answer section below or the chat section and I'll uh, make sure I uh, I uh, ask uh, the doctor. Uh, doctor, you're on mute. So uh, if you could just unmute yourself. So Ron, can you read or? Mm. Sorry? Can you read out the can question? Can you read the question or I should read? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you the questions right okay, now. Okay, okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the first question is, uh, so, uh, you know, you've, you've been uh, in this field for a very long time and you've seen uh, a lot of drugs come and go. So I think initially we had Indinavir, Sequinavir, Lopinavir. 
and then I think came Atazanavir, which kind of changed the whole uh, game. And then uh, now we have uh, Darunavir. Uh, so can you just maybe uh, tell us about your experience of how uh, you know uh, you know how this has uh, affected your treatment of your patients? Yeah, I think Rohan, you asked very good question because I'm talking about this. What you call is a 98, 99 drug drug only was retinovir. Retinovir is to give 12 tablets, recommended over 18 tablets. The patient is to tell doctor, we don't want to leave. That was a toxicity of, of the PI. But nelpinavir came and everything settled. When the nelpinavir came, even there were nine tablets, patients were very happy, no gastritis. That, that was the wonder of the nelpinavir. But Nelpinavir, we started getting what is called pod belly. That we started getting. And of course, by 2000, Epavarange came and the whole game was changed. Epavarange was the game. I remember that was the meeting in Oxford. And Dr. Anton Pozniak, we were having dinner. He just called me to side. He said, Epavarange, this is the drug for the future. He told me he, he, exactly, he said, Dr. Saple, this is the drug for future. And Epavarange came and the whole game was changed. So retinol was very toxic. This is how we have gone through initial period, yeah. yeah. Then of course, Lopinavir uh, again, toxicity, and then Atazanavir came. Again, people were very happy with Atazanavir, yes. So, uh, so one thing, you know, at least from my experience, uh, you know, being in Liverpool and here, I've seen that the new drugs that, uh, you know, come out, uh, get approved, that uh, form guidelines, uh, they, uh, you know, they, they, you can't really translate those to uh, India because of the limitations of uh, resources, right? So uh, how do you uh, deal with that? So when some, some new recommendation comes in, and it's not available, uh, you know, how do you go about it? No, uh, I entirely agree. There are certain drugs with the patient need. So somehow we go for this extended drug trial. We try to involve them in the drug trial. So if we involve them in a drug trial, the drug can be procured. Otherwise, if you write to drug control of India, this is the patient, is the life-saving drugs. Then they give permission for the patient. We have to prove there is no other options or there are resistance to other drugs or patient has no toxicity, cannot afford. So this patient, if you take a permission, a right to drug control of India, they give permission to get this drug from abroad. That's how we are managing. Yeah. And is it a fairly easy process to do that? If you know the format, is an easy process. If you do not format, you do not know how to approach, then it's, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have some clinical questions as well. So uh, one doctor is asking, uh, the patient is compliant on the drug uh, regimen, the three, three drug regimen that uh, he or she has. Uh, CD4 count is uh, good, uh, biologically suppressed, no adverse events. Uh, should the doctor recommend to switch, uh, uh, switch to a two drug combination? Uh, in case of two drug regimen for initial ART, there is a CD4. Okay. So the patient CD4 count is good. Virus load is good. Patient is comfortable. And there are no problem of the toxicity tolerance. Still, you will switch. Correct? No, that is the question. Yeah. 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 Uh, this, this is the situation. Many times patient comes to our clinic. He is on multiple drugs. Patient is happy. Yeah. And patient like to continue the same drug on which they are happy. But we explain to them, you are taking three drugs or four drugs, or you are taking expensive drugs. Now, tablets are available, which are single dose, single tablet, and the cost is less. Once you explain to them, they ask, we are going to take one tablet, but are they are as effective at what I'm taking this regimen? If you tell them and you are confident, Definitely, I'll switch to other drugs. Definitely, I'll do that. 
Yeah. And uh, following that question, is there a CD4 cutoff, uh, which, uh, you know, or a prerequisite uh, that you uh, look for a certain CD4 count before switching them to a true drug combination? Yeah, according to recommendation, they said usually CD4 count has to more than 200, but depends upon the combination. Initially, the combination was Darunavir and Rilpiruvir. So there, if the CD4 count is less than 200, the results were not good. The virus load is more than 1 lakh, results were not good. But now with the combination of now what study I showed, which is done in Germany, that Dolutagravi and Darunavir, the virus load was more than 5 lakhs. So, Darunavir and Dolutagravir combination will work in any condition. So, here in these two drug combination, you can use it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I think since, uh, you know, I've asked people to uh, ask questions in the Q&A, you've been bombarded by a lot. So, I'll maybe go through some of them. Right. So, there's one question where Dr. Alka asks, uh, the patient is on dolutegravir and dolutegravir is known to cause some weight gain, but the patient is not willing to uh, invest time in diet and exercise. So uh, would, would you uh, maybe switch the patient off from uh, dolutegravir or how, how do you go about it? See, dolutegravir, the patients who are on dolutegravir, they are gaining weight. But <coughs> why they are gaining weight still is exactly not known. Number two, even they are getting weight, whether it is causing any, or what is called any problem with the cholesterol, any cardiac problem or dyslipidemia, that is also well not, not well known. And thirdly, what type of this is fat? This is the white fat or the red fat or is it dangerous? They are still working on it, so we do not know but a patient is putting on weight, which is not accessible to the patient, we have to change it. I remember one of my patients was 80 kg. But the end of one year, he became 105 kg. So where is a question there, you have to change the drugs. So ultimately, you can take a call in between you and the patient. But a patient is putting on the weight, which is not acceptable, we have to change it. But just putting on into the limit, I don't think there is any problem, but the patient who puts on weight, I'll get his mainly the lipid profile. That is very important. Blood pressure, blood sugar, these are the comorbidity. I'll get it done. And if there is everything is okay, weight is acceptable, I may not change it. Because still studies are going on. We do not know what is the exact cause. Yeah. Of course, in the, if a patient is a female, they go on increasing weight, there I'll change it. But a patient is male, usually after, after 24 weeks or 48 weeks, their weight becomes static. So in the male, always you can wait for it, yeah. Okay, uh, I hope that answers your question, Dr. Alka. Uh, uh, Dr. Sapre, uh, you know, if I think if you see at the bottom the Q&A section, if you click on that, you know, that, that's where I'm reading the questions out from. So uh, Ravi asks, uh, once you switch to a dual therapy uh, uh, in, in a suppressed patient, you know, we switch, switch him to a dual therapy, uh, how often do you advise uh, to do a CD4 or a virological uh, or a, a viral load test to see whether, uh, you know, he's not going into failure? No, this is also one of the very relevant question. In fact, I mentioned in my talk, that when you were switched to uh, two drug therapy, usually we repeat every three months for first two occasions and everything is okay then every six months. But at least minimum every six months, once you know, and every time we look for the adherence, we spend more time on adherence. But if we can get every three months will be good, but at least six months you should get it done. And I entirely agree with Dr. Ravi, when the you switch patient on true drug therapy, CD4 is not important, but what is important is monitoring of the virus load. I entirely agree with Dr. Ravi what he has raised the question. Yeah. All right, okay, all right. 
so uh, Martin Khan is asking uh, which two drug combinations do you frequently use uh, you know in India so I, I'm guessing if he wants to maybe switch his patients you know which combinations he should look out for most of the drugs I in two drugs I use in dolutegravir and 3TC because the cost is also because uh, darunavir is also good but the cost come so Dolutegravir and 3TC is the most common and there are a lot of study and recommendation even DHS, Director of Human Health Services USA, their first line therapy is Dolutegravir and 3TC. So my maximum patients are on DTC, sorry, Dolutegravir and 3TC, DTG and 3TC. Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, also you have experience with using uh, Dolutegravir and Darunavir combination? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed that one of my patients, last patients, we are yeah, using yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we are using this, but those patients we can afford. Usually that is the, because it becomes expensive. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, if you have a patient on the Runaver and Ritonavir uh, combination, uh, who is failing, uh, you would, which combination would you, uh, or what regimen would you suggest? No, my entire life typical Darunora is the highest generic barrier and it fails. The patient fails, see, this is a PI. The patient fails on the PI, we can use NNRTI, NRTI and NNRTI. Because what has happened, the first line therapy initially wish to give PI as a first line therapy. Initially, I'm talking about initially in 2001, 2002 and three. So NNRTI was not there. So if PI fails, we can use NNRTI, like epavirenz and Neverofin can be used because many times people feel that PI are the most effective. And if you have not used this drug, definitely you can use these drugs, definitely. Uh, so I think uh, Dr. Uh, Appa Saheb Chaghule from Kolapur, he wanted to ask a question uh, directly to you. So we've uh, allowed him to come uh, on the panel. Uh, Dr. Appa Saheb, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Feel nice, sir. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, yeah. Nice uh, conversation about the two drugs. Whether uh, the results are very good, yeah, I'm very happy. Last Achha. four years, I'm following them. Achha, Achha. I, I can understand if I'm following them for six months, one year or two years. But Achha. four years, I'm following them and Achha. their virus load, CD4 count and the symptoms as far as concerned, they are Achha. doing very well. Yeah. We'll have to monitor regularly. Then. Yes, correct. With the Mainly with the virus load, as Dr. Ravi has asked. Yeah. Achha. Will build a uh, big time here is good or uh, dolutegravir and lamivudine combination is good? Okay. About the big gravir, about two drugs, there are hardly any studies. Acha, okay. Yeah, but to extrapolate, because big gravir and dolutegravir extrapolate, you can use it, but there are hardly any studies. But yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. It's a good one. The good combination, but only dolutegravir and uh, lamivudine is good, or uh, darunavir yeah. and uh, dolutegravir is good. Darunavir and raltegravir. That's See, right. raltegravir is now almost all. Oh, it is not in a practice because yeah, now we have and dolutegravir. And, uh, we are going with bictegravir. Dolutegravir, uh, bictegravir. So, as per bictegravir is concerned, hmm. there are no studies. Unless okay. we have studies. Uh, it will be very difficult to recommend. Mm, but okay. nothing is available. Nothing is available. Patient okay. cannot tolerate dolutegravir. Yeah. I will give bictagravir in the interest of the patient. I'll write on the note. These patients okay. can't afford, can't, uh, can't tolerate. He has got Achha. toxicity. Achha. And drugs Achha. Are not, other drugs are not available like Depot-T. Depot-T, that is Taudin, I stopped prescribing in 2000. Right, right. But right. One of my patients, I'm using it because nothing was available. Survival is more important than the... Yeah, but then you have to... We have to do everything in a patient interest. Because like, your conscience okay. should be clear. I'm okay. doing in a patient interest. Yeah. 
ओके ओके वेदर रिटर्न ओवर इज नॉट नेसेसरी ओनली प्लेन डॉलोटोग्राफी डॉलोटोग्राफी इफ यू आर यूजिंग इफ यू आर यूजिंग पीआई इन टू ड्रग ऑलवेज इज अ बूस्टेड पीआई इन द बूस्टेड पीआई रिटर्न ओवर कम्स या अच्छा अच्छा इट शुड बी यूज्ड नो यस करेक्ट यस ओके ओके दैट इज वी आर यूजिंग नाउ एडे डॉलोटोग्राफीर प्लस दारुनावीर दारुनावीर आर दैट इज गुड फॉर मेडिकल बोथ because azt uh, sorry uh, azt will AZ, cause the yeah, liver AZ. problem also tdf is called a renal problem also so why don't you ship this patient yeah. on dolutegravir and 3tc you can ship this patient yeah. there is no yeah. problem yeah only uh, yeah uh, you can ship this is yeah, a this uh, yeah this will be very good combination because you said the cd4 count is good virus is suppressed so I, i'll ship this patient on dolutegravir and 3d is combination if any said is adherence is good so this will be the perfect patient for the two drug combination yeah okay, yeah great. uh so we have a question from uday kumar yeah. uh do you have experience in using biological therapy for the treatment of hiv so you had mentioned uh, this treatment is not available in india but uh, have you uh, you know uh, Uh, done a special import or do you have an experience with that no, i mentioned ebalizumab is not available in the country i use other biologicals in dermatology almost every day i'm using other biologicals yeah no, not ebalizumab uh, i think yeah okay. yeah i uh, use it, yeah okay okay uh there is a question from uh, bhattacharya uh so in that case you presented why did you add maraviroc uh did that lead to cd4 and why maraviroc that drug was available during that time and probably because okay. of resistant testing and the patient we offered patient that this is very expensive patient said i do not have no problem so we added that but uh, before starting maraviroc tropism test has to be done and that was available after doing that only we started yeah okay right uh we'll take a, i think a couple of more questions uh, uh do you uh, what is your opinion on injectable arts uh, do you see that uh, you know making a big dent on uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah yeah in scenario yeah see the injectable i am in contact with dr anton pozniak who is conducting this trial for last 3 years i am always because always interact with him he say these are the patients who do not have good adherence they are fed up of they don't take this so this will be the good one yeah so the poor adherence patient will be good one but again the patient has to be well controlled so viral virological is suppressed then only can use it so there are limitation for this so whenever this this will be available for clinical practice in india we have to be very careful we should not just prescribe easily we have to be very careful or cautious uh so we have a uh, uh, nirupam uh, sorry nirupam who's been uh, wanting to talk for a very long time so i'm just going to call him uh, nirupam chakraborty uh, please unmute and go ahead okay uh okay i don't uh, maybe maybe something's off uh, okay in that case we'll take a last question uh, so how long to wait to start art if we need to start akt uh, okay yeah see but this is the problem in all developing world where the tuberculosis is common or opportunistic is common 
when when it comes to the tb it depends upon the cd4 count of the patient if the cd4 count of the patient is less than 50 then you start tuberculosis and anti tb together there is a danger of what is called immune reconstitutions so but still that say you start first tb treatment for tb wait for 2 weeks and you can switch your uh, you can uh, initiate art as early as possible that means when they start tolerating anti tubercular drugs then you can start if the cd4 is more than 100 then you can afford to wait for 4 weeks and is more than 200 according to study they said you can afford to wait only for completion of anti tb drugs but initiating of anti retroviral therapy as early, as early is very useful compared to what is their outcome of their morbidity and mortality so i will try to initiate art as early as possible when the patients start tolerating anti tubercular drugs and if the cd4 count is very less then be there are chances of iris is more that patient will i wait for 4 weeks to 8 weeks otherwise i'll suggest start anti uh, art as early as possible yeah right okay i think uh, there are few questions so ron can i read that yes please go ahead yeah uh, the please. question is asked by aniket gangurde any update on vaccine vaccine status against hiv see there are two aspect of vaccine number one whether when you give uh, the first accept is a live vaccines or attenuated vaccine fortunately you are asking for the covid vaccine or in general when it is a live vaccine then the cd4 count of the patient has to more than 200 then you can give if it is attenuated vaccine like a covid vaccine you can give even cd4 count is less because it's a attenuated vaccine that is the first aspect the second aspect when you give vaccine the body should start producing anti uh, antibodies and for that our immunity should not be suppressed so with the continuing art there is no problem unless in the patient is on immunosuppressive drug like steroids and that is also steroids you are giving more than 15 mg per day then you can stop for one week are certain biologicals not all biological like rituximab which suppress the b cells which are responsible for the antibody production there you have to stop it for one month so it depends upon the drug to drug so these are the two aspect one is that is a live vaccines or attenuated vaccine and secondly the patient should be able to produce their antibody so is on immunosuppressive we have to about the anti retroviral therapy there is no problem in fact this is a helpful it will increase the cd4 count next question is antifungal agent for recurrent oral candidate patient with the immunological failure with the good viral suppression with a good viral suppression and immunological failure okay is a discrepancy because usually when the virus load is suppressed the immunology is good but this can happen in certain what is called low cd4 count there are many patient you'll be surprised a patient who cd4 count is 3 cd4 count is 13 but many years they are without any operating infection i had a talk with the immunologist they said if the cd8 count is good usually they don't suffer from operation infection because these three patient i am following there for long time so of course i diverted the questions but about the antifungal see antifungal of late after hiv i am in research of antifungal for last 5 years every day i am doing something of research like one of the drug is a fluconazole because as a hiv clinician you may not be knowing but dermatophytosis has become the epidemics everybody get a case of dermatophytosis whether it is ent specialist gynecologist general practitioner because dermatophytosis have become very common there are extensive lesions recurrent and whatever the drugs are available 
like Itraconos all terbinafine, they are expensive because they are mentioned in the book give for two weeks. It doesn't work for two weeks and they're expensive. So I said, I must start working and find out the drugs for masses the drugs which will be available for each and everybody in this country. And I started working. Initially, dermatologists, they did not accept. I suggested fluconazole, 150 ml daily, minimum for eight weeks, or it can be even three months. Initially, there were a lot of resistance, and that is naturally, because there is no evidence there is no, no studies, and then how you are suggesting. But I said in life, you wait for somebody has to start the study. How they have started? All European or Western countries, they are only they are only allowed to do the study. Why we cannot allow to study? So I put a paper with the ICMR. This is the drug which is very safe drugs. We are using in HIV, cryptocurrency is very high doses for long period. So safety is not a problem. Number two, this drug is a very cheap drugs where most of the people can afford and toxicity wise is very safer, safe. And then I went to pharmacodynamics. According to pharmacodynamics, fluconazole is better in any aspect compared to itraconazole and terbinafine. You talk about this half-life, talk about his potency, talk about his retention, any, any point, combination with other drugs. And I'm doing the trial and I found fluconazole is one of the wonderful drugs. I planned for 100 patients, I've done 74 patients and the results are almost 90%. They are doing very well, very well. That is a one point second. When the patient is immunological suppressed, I'm talking about now, 94, 95, who is to see the patient of es esophageal candidiasis. When we see the patient of esophageal candidiasis, that time we used to start fluconazole, what is called available drug from Pfizer or Diflucan. I'm talking of the government hospital, but Pfizer used to give free that drug to the patient. So when you used to start with the fluconazole, patients were not responding. But when their CD4 count used to come up, they were responding. So the, this term was coined in 94, 95 by me in GT hospital. This is called unresponsive infection because the patient is immunocompromised or his CD4 count is less. So we should allow CD4 count of immunity to come up and they will work. So this was not resistance. And I was happy by 2000 Western world, they started calling it a clinical failure. It's not resistant, it's a clinical failure, but I used to call unresponsive. So this patient, you have to give antifungal candidiasis for the longer period. Just giving for once in a week, twice in a week is not enough. You have to give minimum for, according to me, four to six weeks. So we have asked this Dr. Sapan Devre, no, sorry, Sapna Devre. So these are very good questions and my suggestion, give them for the longer period, then only it will work. By giving short period is not going to work, yeah. Uh, doctor, uh, I just wanted to uh, tell the uh, uh, participants that, you know, if you are interested in coming on stage and having a conversation with Dr. Sapre, uh, please raise your hand and, uh, you know, I'll allow you because I think, you know, uh, uh, they're asking one question and they have more, you know, to follow up. So, uh, you know. Uh, okay, raise the hand then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please, please go ahead. If there is a question that you uh, you've seen right now, which you would like to address right now, Dr. Sapre. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm. Uh, yeah. I can. Okay. Yeah. Any question? Weight gain, we answer, cause of splenic abscess in HIV. This is also a wonderful lecture I learned from my patient. One of my patients used to say, doctor, exactly at one o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon, I get a fever. Very CD4 count is good, virus load was under control, patient adherence was very good. Then, of course, we investigated and the sonography showed the splenic abscess. When sonography showed the splenic abscess, the patient asked me, what is the cause? 
I said, you are in India. India, the first cause will be tuberculosis in HIV patient. So you have to look for the tuberculosis. Of course, you have seen splenic abscess in others, like, like um, uh, cryptococcus also we have seen. You can see uh, other, uh, other fungal infection like uh, the histoplasmosis, coccidomycosis. So any opportune infection, you can see splenic abscess, but ideally you have to aspirate and you have to diagnose or sometimes amoebic abscess also not also known not only in the liver, but in our country, we have to rule out the tuberculosis. But this patient said, I don't want to give under investigation. So what treatment you would like to start? I said, I'll give anti-TB as we are in. He said, what is the other cause? I said, other cause can be histoplasmosis, cryptococcosis, or in the rare cases, amoebiasis. So he asked me, what is the treatment for cryptococcus histoplasmosis. I said, you have to take amputerosin B at least for 14 days IV. He said, TB. I said, TB, you have to take long treatment. He said, amoebiasis. I said, it's a short treatment. Then he said, why don't you start that? You know, patient is still, some other patient, they are intelligent also, and they're interested. And we started anti-amoebic treatment. We admitted him, started with IV chloroquine and metrozil both, and patient was absolutely all right. So, you know, I learned this because the patient insisted. Otherwise, as a clinician, I would not have started anti-amoebic in splenic abscess. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, yeah. Uh, we have a uh, Martin Khan uh, who has raised his hand and we've invited him uh, on the panel. Uh, I would request him to please unmute before he asks his question. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, Martin Boli. Uh, actually, I joined late. Uh, so, uh, can you tell me the indications of uh, dual therapy in naive patients? And what are the combinations available in India? The dual therapy. Yeah. See, dual therapy according to USA guideline, dolutagravir and lamivudine can yeah. be used as an initiation therapy. But when yes, you are sir. using dual therapy, what is important is see that patient will be good in adherence. Number two, you should be able to do is virus load every three months initially. That is a very important thing. These two factors has to be taken in consideration. Yeah. And then yes. what they said, when you start to drug therapy, see that there is no underlying resistance to dolotagravir and 3TC. There is no active hepatitis B, and the CD4 count has to more than 200, and virus load has to be less than 5 lakhs. So many conditions as they're given. If you follow that guideline, we can start as the initiation. And, and not in the, the pregnant lady also, they have said. Yeah. And what are the combinations available in India? Dolotagravir, dolotagravir and lamivudin, it is available. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can other be com an other combination? Dolotagravir the combination and you can use lopinavir. Darunavir? And, yeah, darunavir and lamivudin you can use, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Alaknanda on stage as well. Uh, good evening, Dr. sir. Alaknanda, please. Sir, Sir, I have a question. I have one patient who is on Tenofium and uh, uh, Aviratas R for almost four years. Patient uh, CD4 count is good, more than 400. Viral load is also under control, less than 50. Uh, but off late patient is having substantial GERD. And PPI was required to be added. But I uh, the data uh, says that uh, if we add PPIs, there is substantial interaction with Atazanavir. Yes, correct. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, AUC has decreased almost two third uh, in uh, up to two two third level. So yes. uh, if there is no alternative than shifting on PPI, so does twelve hour gap between PPI and etazanavir really work? Because I got few cases wherein, despite of addition of PPI with twelve hour gap, there was no. I mean, 
uh, I mean, uh, CD4 count and uh, viral load both was maintained. But the data shows that the therapeutic data shows that there is a substantial interaction. So I am literally confused how to proceed in such cases. So far, I've been giving with 12 hours apart. So can you please guide? Yeah. yeah. See, I have experience. I entirely agree with you. This is a difficult situation where instead of giving this proton pump inhibitors, we give what is called sucral felt. You try that. It works very well. Sucral felt. Yeah, yeah because there is no... Okay. Yeah, I have tried. yeah, I have tried. I mean, we have given our patient and our patient was happy. But better you, we can ship that drug. You can switch that drug. It, instead of atazanavir, you can use dalutagravir, you can use bictegravir. These drugs are available and the cost is almost same. Okay. Or the cost is a problem. Okay, okay. No, but uh, I meant yeah. to ask if there is, if we give it with 12 hours uh, difference. Because there are few studies which say that if you maintain a difference of 12 hours between atazanavir yeah, and... Yeah, those are studies, they say that. But you know, if the patient, you're sure about the patient will follow that. If you're not sure about that, better to switch these drugs. Because in our India, somehow the patients are not reliable. They take it easy, not reliable, they take it easy. They take it casually. They don't take it seriously. Most of the patient I'm talking, I think you must be also having the same experience, correct? Mm, right, sir. But then if the patient is educated, then and if we make them understand the, I mean, for at least educated patient group, uh, it is, you know, reliable, we can expect we, a compliance. We, we, we don't say educated, we say the patient who understand, because there are a lot of educated people, they don't take this. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is your experience. I, I, agree sir, with. One more, I have a one more question. Uh, my two or three patients, they are from, uh, I mean, they do have history of epilepsy. So they are on uh, either carbamazepine or oxcarbamazepine. So shifting them, them on uh, DTG because they already are in overweight category. So D if, if I have to add DTG, I have a concern of weight gain. Uh, so only option remains is raltegravir or, uh, I mean, in the past, we have used uh, this. Uh, when it comes to drug drug interaction, see, carbamazepin is the the metabolism with the CYP450. So, problem right. is the metabolism. So, as per the drug drug interaction is concerned, bictegravir, dolutagravir, raltagravir. Raltagravir is the best drug, has got minimum drug drug interaction. So, you can use raltagravir, but I'll ask Rohan to have the answer because he'll be the better person. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, in terms of drug drug interactions, uh, you know, mostly the interactions happen, uh, you know, when uh, because of either transporters. So when uh, uh, a transporter is moving a drug from one compartment to the other. So for example, if, uh, if you, uh, if it's the drug is getting absorbed, uh, or uh, you know, from your gut to your uh, into your uh, uh, blood, uh, there's a transporter called PGP, which is involved in in most uh, absorption of drugs. And if you give a concomitant drug which uh, interferes with that, it changes the pharmacokinetics. So it can give suboptimal therapy or it can give side effects. Right. Uh, similarly, uh, most drugs are metabolized by an enzyme called CYP3A4. So around 80% of the drugs are metabolized with that. Uh, and your, uh, for example, your drug, uh, sorry, uh, rifampicin, you know, it, it messes around with the CYP3A4, you know, so it, it changes the concentrations of your drug, right? So uh, an ideal, uh, so, uh, so antiretrovirals, which are uh, metabolized by CYP3A4, they, are, they, they usually become the victim or the perpetrator of drug, drug interactions. Now, the unique thing about raltigravir is raltigravir is not metabolized by CYP3A4. It is metabolized by an enzyme called UGT1A1, right, which is quite a rare enzyme. So, uh, you know, if, if drug drug interactions is, uh, is one of a concern, raltigravir is the best one for it because uh, it, its metaboli metabolism is uh, through a completely different mechanism. And it is, you know, you can be fairly confident that giving other drugs won't mess around with the treatment of raltigravir. So, so, but then raltegravir is on 
cost wise little on a higher side what if the patient is not in affordable category i mean of course those who are affordable we i'm definitely preferring that but if cost is a concern and if i have to avoid both dtg and daltegravir then the third would be uh dr sapre uh, you're on you're on mute sorry Uh, Sorry. Have... What is the past history? Uh, what are the other drugs? Yeah. Now is the patient is the tenofovir, FTC, and atazanavir. Correct. So instead yeah. of uh, instead of atazanavir, we can use other drugs like lopinavir, but the gastritis will be more with the retinol. Okay. Then what is come to the insti, or, or or you can use darunavir also, but again the uh, again the drug drug interaction will be. More so instead of atazanavir, and patient has used epivirin and nevirapine in the past. No, no. For epivirin or nevirapine, then you can go for that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sir, but, can, uh, yeah. if 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 that is will the be safer, system. that will be safer and cheaper also. The patient is not affording. I'll add other epivirin or nevirapine. Only thing when you are starting nevirapine, you know that no need to tell, but we have to keep in mind about the Steven Johnson syndrome or drug reaction. We have to warn the patient, and sometimes it can happen at the end of forty-five days. We have seen not only first fourteen days. Yes, madam. And sir, with if I were in the risk of CNS toxicity or the adverse events from psychiatric point of view, I mean. I got few patients. Yeah, that that is they have mentioned in the literature, but I'm using since 2001. I have not seen any single patient. Now you only tell me how many patients they are going to psychosis of. Uh, on, no, on I'm I'm asking one, but about one particular case because one of my patient has a history of psychosis. I mean, he he was on. Uh, patient has got psychosis. Then you start and just observe that patient. Then you start on nevirapine. Okay. Okay. Right, sir. Okay. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you, doctor. Alakmanda. Uh, uh, doctor Sapre, uh, there is an interesting question which you know, I'd like you to take. Uh, uh, you know, uh, considering the latest guidelines, you know, which has kind of uh, elevated the position of dolutegravir. So there is one asking role of dolutegravir in uh, uh, preventing mother to child transmission. Mother to child initially, there was a problem the neural tube defect. That was a problem. That's why they said when you go for the European guidelines or the American guidelines, they said better to start dolutegravir after first trimester. But if you see the African studies, the African study says the neural defect in the patients on dolutegravir. And non-dolutegravir, there is hardly any difference. There is no difference. So they that study, and thirdly, they say if you give folic acid during the pregnancy, chances of neural defect is less, or is comparable whether you give dolutegravir or non-dolutegravir. So the recommendation of WHO in a country where there's a what is the financial constraints. You can use dolutegravir, but you have to counsel the patient that mm. about the neural tube defect, and then you start. So these are the various points. If I get opportunity, I'll start after first trimester. But there are no other option. That is the only option. Then I'll start, but I'll give folic acid and I'll counsel patient properly. Yeah. Uh, Any so other thing to, they want to add, they can also add because I can also learn from them. Yeah, because we have to learn from each other. Dr. Balaji, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, there was uh, doctor. Uh, uh, this very interesting uh, talk and the way you have uh, gone about with uh, answering these questions. I can see one question: If a patient is having CNS tuberculosis, is it advisable to start dolutegravir with 3TC? CNS, no, the patient has got CNS tuberculosis. That means his CD4 count may not be good. So starting two drugs is out of questions because the patient has got opportunistic infection. When he has got opportunistic infection, means 
Sometimes what happens, the CD4 count may be good, but what is important CD4 percentage? In Johns Hopkins, always they follow CD4 percentage than the CD4 count. For example, if the WPC count is high, the CD4 count will be very high, but the percentage will remain the same. Similarly, patient is an oncotherapy, the CD4 count will go down. Sorry, CD4 count will go down, but WBC count goes down, but percentage remains stable. That's why the if the real parameter of the guideline is CD4 percentage, then CD4 count. So CD4 percentage is very important, and the fluctuation is more in children. That's why when you give ART, they have to follow the CD4 percentage than CD4 count. So that is about the CD4 and CD4 percentage. Person has got brain, brain tuberculosis. I never give two drugs. I never use two drugs. Yeah. Thank you, doctor. Uh, I think we've got a, a wonderful audience uh, who have been patient for a long time. And uh, it's always uh, enlightening to listen to Dr. Saple, but uh, Considering time constraints, I think we should uh, 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 take a call now and uh, we certainly invite more questions. We will uh, take it up with Dr. Saple, our medical team, and get back to you, doctors. But before we sign off, uh, I should thank Dr. Saple for his time and more so for his extended time and the patience with which he has been explaining uh, things. It comes uh, not only with uh, uh, an abundance of experience, but his insightful interpretations is what makes things uh, interesting. And uh, the very fact that we have exceeded our time limit and uh, people are still uh, looking forward to listening to you. Uh, thanks a lot, doctor. We really count upon your experience and expertise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Yeah, yeah. See you, see you. And, uh, have a good evening. Good yeah, day. everybody be safe. But keep on working. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Ron, thank you very much.